So tonight we're talking about rocker plates. Now if you're not familiar with the rocker plate, this is a rocker plate. All right, in efforts to better explain a rocker plate, because I didn't do a very good job, uh, the plates consist of a base plate, which is here on the bottom, and a top plate, which is here. And the top plate simply hinges on some hardware, whether it be a vibration isolator or a linear rod bearing to give you a side-to-side -side motion. Uh, in the linear bearing case, a front-to-back motion. So what this device allows you to do is to take your static trainer and turn it into a not-so-static trainer. It is also said that uh, it will reduce stress on your frame. And it makes, for me, the long endurance rides, two hours plus, a little more manageable. So companies are starting to catch wind and they're starting to produce these things at a very high cost, some upwards of uh, 1200 bucks. But there's a large DIY community on Facebook called Rocker Plates. Look it up, I highly recommend it. I gained all my information from this group. Now among this group, there are two of the most popular rocker plates. Now there are all types of rocker plates, but for the sake of this video, I'm only gonna discuss two. So let's talk about the two most popular rocker plates in this group. On one hand, the more affordable, the more achievable is to go with the vibration isolator. These are very simple. They only go side to side. The second most popular is the linear rod bearing. This sits on a rod, goes through this hole. As you can see, there's bearings inside of here, which allow it to go forwards and backwards or fore and aft, as well as side to side. This is a little more expensive and it takes a little more engineering to get done. The basic principles are the same with both. What we're gonna to build today is the linear rod bearing. I am not going to build a vibration isolator, but there are some things to keep in mind. I have read that you want about a three inch gap between the top and the bottom plate. That way it gives you seven degrees of rock and this is only about an inch and a half. So you're gonna to have to raise this up. You can raise this up with a platform wood, another uh, three quarters of an inch on both sides. One thing you can also do is make sure your bottom plate is not the same width as your top plate, which will allow that top plate to rock a little further. So you could reduce, I don't know, three quarters of an inch. Precursor aside, I'm gonna show you and walk you through how I build my rocker plates. Now the one we're gonna be using is a prototype because my CNC guy flew the coop and I can't find another one to take his place. So we're gonna use a prototype I've shown you my rocker plate and I'm going to build a prototype for my good buddy and friend Aldo across the street. So let's get started. Here is all of the materials you are going to need to build a rocker plate. The link for everything will be in the description below. All the parts, I'm going to also include all the parts you need to build a vibration isolator. Where I buy all my parts for a reasonable price. And that's that, yeah. So let's start building. This is a 20 millimeter rod setup. So the bearings are 20 millimeter, the, my rod is 20 millimeters, and the mounts are, are 20 millimeters. So hey, let's get this shit up. So just real quick, what you're gonna need is you're going to need the linear rod bearings. You're gonna need the rod itself. You need springs. You're gonna need, these are I think six inch. I bought these on Amazon. These air up into little toy balls. You're going to need the standoffs that mount the rod for the stability, and you're going to need a top and a bottom plate. Now, this is my prototype, and I was planning on giving one of these away to, to one of y'all. I, I still may do that, but I'm still trying to find a CNC guy. If I can't find a CNC guy, maybe I'll give away the hardware kit. Uh, if that's something you're interested in, let me know. This would have to be in the United States because this shit is heavy, and I'm not trying to get charged so I'm I'm sorry about anybody who's watching this overseas if we do go that route so all that aside let's walk through this let me get rid of this mess oh clean 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 ah. you're going to design your own have some channels because the balls will roll but if you have channels the balls will stay within those channels you don't need top and bottom from my experience um, it works just fine with only bottom and it also cleans up the look of the top 
you can't really see the balls, especially if they're odd colors like, like we're going to be working with today. So, uh, mounting hardware, splash that in, and let's begin. It is also worthy to note that the springs may wear down the bearing seals, so keep that in mind. I've been on the lookout for some 20 millimeter washers, and some people have 3D printed uh, little bits that go in here, but that's neither here nor there. So let's continue. So this is it for the bottom half. We are nearly finished. So. Also something worth noting is I have a hole here. This is for a bullseye level. Now this is optional, but if you're using the kicker which has a 10 pound flywheel, it offsets the weight of the plate. So instead of pumping up so one side more than the other, I use a 10 pound weight and pump them up evenly. So the 10 pound weight will go on one side, the opposite of the, the flywheel. So the recommendation for this particular rocker plate build is three quarters of an inch birch plywood with at least nine layers I believe is what it is this is cheap stuff that I got from Home Depot and paid way too much just to do kind of a mock run on this wood so I don't recommend buying this at Home Depot and I think it's like five layers so it's not very strong it's not birch I don't think another thing to note is when I, when I got my measurements for these, which are 40 millimeter across and for, the holes are 40 millimeters apart all the way around, I pulled this up about a half an inch as well as pulled that one back about a half an inch before I got my measurements. So that way the spring is already has a little bit of tension on it. So you don't want to have it loose and it's just going to be, it's just not going to be great. So pull it about a half an inch and then put it on. Let's mount the top plate. On to the balls. That's basically it. It's a rocker plate. It has flex side to side. Of course, I don't know if I can flex it. It's got little handles. See what the inside looks like. And the bottom, you see the little balls. They'll stay inside these. They will stay inside these channels. Anyway, that's it. That's going to be all for this video. If you found this informative, helped you out, like it, let me know. Also, if y'all want to see me give out a, a hardware kit or wait for my CNC, me to find another CNC guy to cut out one of my boards and give that away, let me know what y'all think in the comments below. If you didn't like this video, if you just hate indoor riding and it isn't for you, go ahead and slap a dislike on that too. Um, that button's there for y'all. As far as videos go, I got one coming up. We're going to try to record the Hell of the North Texas time trial. I'm in that. And hopefully we're going to place well. It's been a year since I've raced, so I've had a lot of training in between. So wish me luck. It's going to go down. I'll see you for Hell of North Texas. Later.